This 33-year-old mom makes $40,000 per month in passive income by doing a business that now only takes up two hours of her day. Today, I'm going to talk about the Google to purchase business model and show you step by step just how easy it is to set up from home with no skills, no experience, and for the price of a cup of coffee per month. Is that latte for you? Um, this was supposed to be hot. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Full disclaimer, while setting up this business is simple, you need to do weeks of consistent and diligent work to see results. The lady in question present in the article makes it clear that when she first started, she poured hours of work into this before it eventually turned into a completely passive source of income. I'm going to give you all the tools you need, some hacks and shortcuts that you can use and show you the full process, but if you want to take this seriously, you need to show up daily and do the work. So with that in mind, let's get started. So first, what is Google? to purchase. There are over 88 billion searches happening on Google every single day and a good portion of those searches actually relate to products. Searches like best laptops in 2023 or best budget wireless headphones or top running shoes are happening every single day and people are making money from those searches. For example, last week I was looking for a backpack for all my camera gear. So I went on Google and searched for best camera backpacks under $200. And you'd have all these websites with articles on a list of backpacks that they would recommend for that budget. Now what most people don't know is that when you open these articles for one, the owner of that page instantly makes ad revenue from you simply browsing through the page, and two, if you go ahead and buy one of these backpacks through the displayed Amazon links, they receive a commission for that sale. And this is what Google to purchase actually is in a nutshell. It's exactly how Wirecutter, the shop recommendation site of the New York Times, has been making millions of dollars each and every single year. They write articles and reviews of the most popular products on the internet and receive a cut for each transaction that was directed from their website. And it's really no surprise that they make this kind of money because their articles get about 450 million clicks every single month. Now the hard truth is that as a small blog owner you cannot compete with the New York Times. You can't outrank them in the Google search simply because they have much more authority. Authority means that Google considers them as a reliable and credible source of information and gives them priority in searches over other websites. Websites. So instead of trying to play in the big leagues, our focus should be on the little leagues where the money making potential is much higher. And we can do that by targeting long tail keywords, which I'll show you exactly how to do later in the video. Okay, so how can you get started? There are really only a couple of tools you need, but first I want to break down the total cost of starting this business before we jump in. First, you will need a web hosting service with a free domain for $2.75 per month. This service already covers pretty much everything you need. For the price of a cup of coffee each month, you'd have a www address on the internet and a website where you can write as many blog posts as you'd want. Then you will need ChatGPT to generate quick articles that serve as a starting point. We are going to rewrite these articles for SEO, otherwise known as search engine optimization. ChatGPT is completely free to use at the time of recording this video. Finally, if you really want to put in the effort and take this seriously, I recommend signing up to Surfer, which is the best rated SEO and content optimizer that will give you suggested keywords and hacks to help you rank on the first page with your blog posts. Now this is optional because it's an expensive investment for $69 per month. For something cheaper, you can try Phrase for $15 per month, but you are limited to four articles. Now I think you would only really need these tools in the first couple of months as you become better and quicker at editing and optimizing ChatGPT generated articles. I'll include links in the description to each tool. I'm not affiliated with any of these. I just think they're helpful tools for this business. Okay, so if you're with me so far, let's get down to the full process, starting with step one, picking a niche. Simply put, your website name and your content is going to depend on what you want to write about. So the first step is to establish the type of products you want to cover. This can range from kitchen appliances to consumer electronics to beauty and skincare products. My recommendation is to try and find a category that you're at least somewhat familiar with. For the sake of argument, let's say you'd want to go for kitchen appliances. Step two is researching your niche. 
To start, you need to verify that there is an actual online interest for these products. So to check this, you can go to a website called Google Trends, which gives you data on how much interest there is for your keywords. And we can see on this graph right here that there has been a stable interest for kitchen appliances over the past 12 months, which means we can move forward with our niche. Now, kitchen appliances are an especially good category because you can write about many, many products like fridges, toasters, coffee machines, blenders, dishwashers, and so on. So the next step would be to map out your interest groups. If your niche is kitchen appliances, you ideally want to structure your blog to address all the different products within this category. But you don't just want to throw random product ideas around. Remember, everything that we do here needs to be verified and backed by data. So how would you know which products to hit? Using a completely free Chrome extension called Keyword Surfer, we can see exactly how much search volume there is for certain keywords. So you're ideally going to make a list of about 40 to 50 kitchen appliances, and you're going to take each product one by one, type it into Google search, and make note of the search volume given by Keyword Surfer for each. After you write down the search volume for each of these products, you will reduce your 40 to 50 items to the 20 most searched products. These are the products you will be looking to cover in your blog in the beginning using a method called long tail keyword targeting, which I am going to cover in a bit. First and foremost, you will need to establish what your website will be called. You can gather a few ideas from ChatGPT and choose about two or three that you like the most. After that, we can start laying the foundations for our website by purchasing a web hosting service. And my recommendation is that you go for Bluehost. Their $2.75 per month plan gives you a free internet address or domain for the first year and an SSL certificate that authenticates your website's identity and enables an encrypted connection, both of which are the standard for today's web browsing. The reason why I recommend Bluehost is because you get an automatic install of the latest version of WordPress, which is the world's most popular website builder, the number one source for blogs, and as a result, our website website creator of choice for this business. So using the link in the description, you'll go to get started now and select the basic plan. Then you'll need to type a domain name and verify if it's available. The domain name should be one of the two or three names you picked out from ChatGPT. You'll need to try out a few variations here to see which domain name is available, but I do recommend keeping the .com if possible. Then you'll just fill out your personal details and purchase the basic plan. Just make sure to uncheck all these boxes first because we don't need the extra services. After you made your purchase, this should be your main dashboard and you'll immediately have a login with WordPress option come up. Just click on that and you'll be taken to the website setup page where you'll click on start setup. After that, you'll need to type in your site title and a brief description. Once that's done, you can select the theme to get started and just click through the pages because you don't need to have a perfect design from the get-go. This is just the standard template that you can customize later on. Finally, this is the main WordPress dashboard you'll see once the setup is completed. And last things you want to do is set up Jetpack, which is just a site security and backup system completely free. The second thing is to apply a different theme under the appearance section. I recommend something simple like this 2021 theme here because we really only only need the blog feature to be able to publish blog posts. Once you apply a theme you like, you can start publishing your first blog post by going to posts here and click on add new. And WordPress's blog poster is very intuitive. You can add your own blocks of text or any images very easily. Now, I'm not going to go into full detail about how to build a WordPress site in this video since I would like to focus on the business aspects and how you can prepare content for the next several months. But if you need the extra guidance, I've included links in the description with comprehensive tutorials and walkthroughs on WordPress's interface. Alternatively, if you'd like me to make my own tutorial on WordPress, make sure to drop a comment down below. Okay, so we have our domain, we have our website, now it's time to start building up our content. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we can't compete in the big leagues with the New York Times. If we want a slice of this pie, we have to start in the little leagues first and build ourselves up. We can do that by targeting long tail keywords. You see, bigger publications write articles containing short tail keywords, so simply best toasters or best coffee machines. What we want to focus on is more specific keyword phrases such as best toasters for bagels, best coffee machines for espresso, best dishwashers under $300, because these longer keywords are easier to rank for on Google search since there aren't many high profile websites writing articles about those specific products. Now, for the 20 highest search volume products we picked out earlier, we're 
gonna ask ChatGPT to give us five long tail keywords for each. According to basic math, we'll be left with 100 long tail keywords in total, meaning that we now have 100 blog post ideas that we can start covering. And this is where the grind begins. We're gonna ask ChatGPT to write a listed blog post for five products in each of these topics, with a description of each product and also listing pros and cons. For reference, it takes ChatGPT about three to four minutes to write a comprehensive blog post about a given product. Now there is no trick or shortcut when it comes to blogging. Like with most side hustles, first you need to be consistent with publishing on a daily basis and second you need data optimized writing so Google can rank your posts for relevant keywords. And with that we've reached step number six, content optimization and SEO. So once we have a chat GPT written article on a topic, we will need an SEO optimization tool like Surfer which we talked about earlier. Surfer has a feature called Content Editor which analyzes the text written by ChatGPT and gives it an overall content score. The higher the content score, the closer your blog post can rank to the first page on Google for that specific search. Now in my experience, for the best results, you generally need a content score between 75 and 85. Now out of the box, ChatGPT generated articles will not have a high content score. Surfer will give you suggestions on what phrases and keywords to add or remove to improve your content score, how many headings to add, the number of words and paragraphs. So you will ideally rewrite the ChatGPT generated articles to improve the content as much as possible according to Surfer's suggestions. After you have a well-optimized blog post ready to publish, you can copy and paste the text from Surfer into your WordPress blog post, but before you hit publish you will need affiliate links and google ads you can sign up to become an amazon associate through the amazon associate central once you're registered and completed your profile you will gain access to sharing affiliate links to products listed on amazon so let's look at a concrete example of inserting an affiliate link of a product into your blog post. So we have our top toasters blog post right here on WordPress ready to publish. Now what we want to do is add a button under each toaster that will contain the affiliate link to that toaster. And we do that by going to add block, type button and select buttons block right here. Add a buy on amazon.com text into your button. Now you'd want to look up your toaster on amazon.com and you'll have a toolbar at the top that says get link. And you'll select text right here and this is your affiliate link to the product. You're going to copy this link, go back to your blog post and select the link button right here and just paste it in there. Make sure you have open a new tab enabled so that when a reader clicks on the link, it keeps your blog open and just opens Amazon in a new tab. And you just repeat the same process for the rest of the products you talk about in your blog post. Now because this video is already getting long enough, I'll leave a link down below on how you can connect Google AdSense as well to your blog to have ads displayed on your website and maximize revenue. Once you have the content of your blog post all ready, you can hit publish and you'll have your first blog post up on your website. So a couple of bonus tips, ad blockers are a thing and users who visit your blog and have their ad blockers enabled will prevent you from getting Google AdSense revenue from their visit. If you want to avoid this, you can install some ad block detectors to your WordPress website. Keep in mind that you run the risk of driving visitors away if you do this and you might not get any revenue from affiliate links if this happens. So I recommend staying away from ad block detectors for the first couple of months until your blog gains traction. Bonus tip number two, if you want to maximize or double the traffic to your blog, I recommend you create social media pages like Instagram or Facebook where you can link every single blog post you create. This will also give you the option to run Facebook ads, which really just doubles the amount of traffic you can get. Now, in terms of closing thoughts, as I said, this side hustle requires a lot of grinding and you likely won't see results for a good couple of months until you really build up your blog posts and Google notices you as a serious website. But as this mom has shown, it can be done. It just takes effort and dedication. Hope you guys found this video useful. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. Drop a comment down below if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you guys very soon.